Hey guys, today we're gonna talk about the pattern element in SVG. So let's get right to some code. So here we are in VS Code and we're looking at an SVG. And so let's go over the setup real quickly. Um, we have our SVG element and it has a view box of 400 by 300. And that'll be more relevant as we break down all the content within it. A lot of things are commented out and we have a pattern element, which we're gonna be talking about. And the only thing we have right now that's displaying is a rectangle, has a white fill and a stroke of black. And by default, it's one pixel thick. And there is a width of 100% and a height of 100%. So that will pretty much span it or spread it out the entire view box, which again is 400 by 300. So if we get rid of this percentage, it's gonna be one block or 100 by 100 in this 400 by 300 grid. Now to get this to tile, we're gonna put it within the pattern element. And there's one more thing we're gonna have to do. So nothing is displaying right now. And that's because there's something in the pattern element, but it doesn't display by default. You actually need to reference it. So our pattern element has an ID of pattern. And so we're gonna reference it in a rectangle. And so you start seeing this. Um, what's happened with this rectangle? Well, it has a width of 100% and a height of 100%. And as we saw before, that will spread out through the whole view box, which again is 400 by 300 of a height. And so that's why a 100 by 100 um, tile will fill it four by three. Pretty easy math if you're following along. All right, now, what can we do to make an easy pattern? Um, so anything you do within these tile boundaries, um, you see a grid. So if you keep everything not touching those edges or boundaries, you get a nice repeating pattern. And so we're putting a circle, has a blue fill, and it's right in the middle um, at 50-50. And it has a radius of 25. So it kind of spans about 50 pixels. So 25 this way and 25 that way. So if we look at any tile within the pattern, um, the zero, the like the origin or like the zero zero coordinate is right at the top left corner. So this will be 50, 50, this will be a hundred, hundred. Now that's only for the tile for the SVG itself. This is really zero, zero, and this will be 400, 300. But so in the coordinate system of the pattern is a bit different um, than the actual SVG. Now that is determined by pattern units. So the default is object bounding box. And the reason I usually avoid that is because it's percentage based on the container. So if the container changes width and height, all of a sudden the pattern will warp or distort based on the container. And that's not exactly what we want. We want behavior that's more familiar. So it really behaves exactly like what we're used to by the default uh, view box and SVG element. Um, when we put something that's 100 by 100 into our SVG, it doesn't work. It just, it's what we would expect. So it's, um, when we use the pattern unit user space on use, it's consistent whether the box is fluid, like it is right now, it's percentage-based, right? 100 by 100. Um, or if we made it fixed, so if we only put the pattern in a 100 by 100, it doesn't distort. Let's make this 200 by 200. No distortion, it just fits as many instances of the pattern tile as it can. So let's go back to 100% by 100%. So we have the pattern as many times as we can. 
So that's why I always reach out for user space on use. Okay, so we have set up the scene pretty simply, but now let's get to a little bit more advanced stuff. When we are creating a pattern, usually you're not just staying within those bounds, you're gonna wanna go on the edges, and that's where the trickiness comes in. So um, let's actually do something different than I have prepared here. That's always a good idea, right? So we're gonna, let's actually take this one. We're gonna put a circle on the edge. So right now it's on the corner, but I wanna put it on um, the coordinate 0, 50. And let's get that back in. And we're gonna hide this one in the middle. So when you put something on an edge, it starts to clip off. That's because we're only showing um, the contents of this tile and repeating it. So anything outside of it disappears and is replaced by what you see on the next instance of the tile. So we're always gonna see the same exact thing across every tile. But if we want the circle to be complete, we need to do reach for a little trick and really it comes down to cloning the exact same element but on the opposite boundary. So here we're on the left boundary. So to uh, compensate, we need to put it on the opposite boundary. So let's duplicate the shape. Oops, I hit the wrong button, sorry about that. Let's try this again. All right, I duplicated it, but this time let's put it on the opposite side. So what is the opposite side? Well, so we're on the zero for the X coordinate. We need to go on the opposite side. How much? Well, the exact number is the width of the tile. So the tile is a 100. So if I put this on 100, all of a sudden, oops, I put it on 1000, 100. And you'll see it and it looks like a perfect circle. And that's because now we have a circle on the left side and one on the right side. They're both getting clipped, but in a way that they're perfectly aligned. So they make a complete circle. Now you can definitely tell that there's clipping if I w or that they're not aligned when you don't use um, this perfect number, which is the width of the tile. So let's say we were a little short with 90 and you can still see that clipping, right? They're not aligned. Now you kind of see that they're off. Same thing if you go beyond 110, it looks like they're not aligned. So that's why the magic number is 100. Now this all changes when you're on a corner. You don't need to just go on the opposite side, but you need to go on all corners. So let's put our circle in the middle back and we're gonna add a circle in the top left corner. And why is this in the top left corner? There's no coordinates. Well, the default for an X coordinate that doesn't exist is zero, and same with the Y. So this circle is being placed at the coordinate zero, zero. And so to compensate for this clipping, we need to add a circle on the top right. So that would be zero, oh, I mean, that would be 100, zero. The Y doesn't change, it stays at zero. And so we add one there. Now we need to add one on the opposite corner, which is the bottom left. So zero, 100. And so we only need a Y coordinate because that's 100. Now we're gonna need both, we need 100, 100. And that is how you kind of compensate for that clipping. You need to just clone that same element in the exact same spot, um, just on the other corners. Again, if you're short, 90, it just will look off. So to perfectly align them, you need to compensate for the width, for the X element, and the, the, for the Y coordinate, you need to add the height. And then when it comes to the opposite 
corner, you need to add both the, the width and the height to the x and y coordinates. All right, so that's the basics of the pattern element. Um, let's actually just get rid of this grid, and this is what a seamless pattern will look like. You can put other paths in here. So say we had um, a more complex, like a star, the same uh, information applies. You would just clone that shape, place it on each corner or at each opposite edges. Um, so hope that was helpful. If you have any other questions about SVG or more specifically SVG patterns, ask in the comments and I'm going to be creating more videos on patterns and SVGs in general. So hope that was helpful. I'm Matt Visiwig. See you next time.